The second stage venue was the 9.5 kilometer long Cedar Hill stage, only to be run twice before the lunch halt. Allborn's best was second fastest in stage four, but was still about 20 seconds adrift of the stage winner. Bourne was driving the car in anger for the first time since it developed a problem in May last year before Rally Barbados. Neil Armstrong had been on fire in the morning loop of day two, winning all the stages at Bronte. Armstrong also carried off a clean sweep of the Cedar Hill stages and with over 50 kilometers left on the day, he had about a minute and 30 seconds advantage over his closest driver. <laughs> A mistake on stage five cost Christian Bourne a minute and he slipped from fourth overall to fifth before the lunch interval. No such mistake from this man, Stuart Johnson. He was the comfortable group and leader and sitting impressively in second. The young and talented Chris Sumer finished 7th overall in 2013 and was looking to improve on this placing. At the lunch halt he was 4th overall and 2nd in Group N. After some quick work by the marshals, Harold Morley was one of the drivers caught out by this triangle. However, he was 3rd in Group N and inside the overall top 10. Trinidad's Ryan Pinero and Ross Vieira were battling for second in Group A, holding on to this spot by less than five seconds. Ireland's Frank Kelly was setting some impressive times and was easily the fastest two-wheel drive in the rally. Giving chase was Trinidad's Ryan Peru, who was second in SM6 and second fastest two-wheel drive to date. The stages were reversed and for the afternoon loop the crews were to do three stages at the Shorter Cedar Hill and two at the Bronte venue. Orbitus's Paul the surfer born continued to charge through the stages after lunch. However, he was not closing the advantage on the two front runners. With little room for mistakes on the Trinidad stages, which are often lined with deep ditches, Warren was making sure the car stayed on the road despite his lack of confidence in the pace notes. The dominance of Neil Armstrong continued after lunch as he picked up where he left off with stage victory after stage victory. He's been relentless over the day two stages and his lead kept on growing with every passing kilometer. In his request to claw back some time, Christian Bourne was being caught out by some of the corners. Jamaica's Bobby Marshall lost ground in the overall two-wheel drive second place battle, but was sitting comfortably in the leader's position in M2. Trinidad's Latif Khan lost about five minutes just before lunch as he was unable to finish the stage and was out of the overall hunt. 
After dropping two minutes in the stage before lunch, Trinidad's Colin Khan began to climb back up the overall standings as well as Group A. Sarah Jane Gopal, who is a teacher, was one of the few competitors still in the overall hunt. Donald Gopal was third in SM6 after battling through some morning gremlins. The day belonged to Neil Armstrong and it was abundantly clear that there was no room for game as the SX Tour was in battle trim and he was maintaining a rather rapid pace despite his healthy advantage. <laughs> 10 stages and 10 fastest times were the order of the day as he held and improved his lead. It has not been an easy day for Paul Bourne, who had not been on the pace all day. With any chances of victory slipping away, Bourne sat in third and had huge chunks of time to make up if he wanted to challenge for second. Yet another out by Christian Bourne. One driver who appeared to be trouble-free was Stuart Johnson. Leading Group N, Johnson was second overall. He was approximately 40 seconds ahead of Paul Bourne at the end of day two. Second in Group N and eyeing a place in the top five was Craig Sumer. Stage 11 saw Peter Morris and his daughter Hannah exiting the overall battle, but continuing the rally. Reyaz Mohammed was third in the SM6 battle at the end of day two. Suriname's Raj Prasad lost his left rear suspension before the lunch stop and his crew worked hard to get him back in the rally. Harold Morley was sitting in third in Group N and still in the overall runnings. The lone female driver in the rally survived day two unlike many other crews that did not make it in a rally known for its high attrition rate. Next time on Race 1 TV, Rally Trinidad 2014 Part 2.